Hey everybody, this is TCG Productions here, and I just wanted to share something that I found rather interesting about Windows. Probably the uh, early Windows NT derived products such as Windows 2000 and Windows XP, but anyways. So, I noticed something interesting while I was fooling around with the system account on Windows 2000. Now, if, now quick answer. For, now, if, if you're trying to do the setHC trick to get system on Windows 2000 and you're typing shift five times, but you're not actually getting the command prompt, what you need to do is you need to instead type alt shift print screen. Then choose OK, and then you will get your system level command prompt, at which point you can start Windows Explorer and get a system level shell. Now, doing that tends to kind of do, th tends to uh, slightly break a few things. And in the case of the Athlon 64 system, the uh, if you try logging on as an ordinary user after you've gotten a uh, system level explorer shell, you're going to get an error stating that the process has already been launched by another user, and you're going to have this interesting looking dialog box that gets left behind, and you can't actually control anything about it. Let me just send that dialog out it's as far out of the way as we can get it. So, something I noticed is if you have a system level shell in Windows Explorer and you actually go to the start menu, click shut down, and let me see, exposure on the camera appears to be slightly tweaked. Maybe the focus too, I think the focus is also... Okay. Anyways, if you are, if you have a system level shell in Windows Explorer, I mean, here's the, uh, I can never recall this particular dialog box, like there's the uh, logon dialog box. If you go to the start menu and you click shut down and you actually log off the system user, something rather interesting happens. The system actually goes ahead and performs a shutdown but it is a non-ACPI shutdown instead. You have basically shut down the Windows operating system by gracefully logging off the system user. So I found that rather interesting. Now, of course, we can just hit reset here. And of course, we can just hit reset here and have the system boot up once again. Alright, hard disks are spinning back up. Because what happens is, as part of the non-ACPI shutdown uh, process, all the hard disks are parked and powered off. Because there are serial ATA, there are both parallel and serial ATA commands with in, contained within the command set that allow you to shut down, uh, well, stop, spin down the spindle motor on drives for power savings or in preparation for a system shutdown. So I'm actually going to go ahead and jump over to, Win to Windows XP Professional X64 and hopefully this boots. Okay, it looks like it's going to boot. Uh, ever since I took disk images of this, of all the drives in this system back in January, the system boot up process has exhibited some truly bizarre behavior. And this is, and that, this is one of those examples. It just kind of hangs and stutters around before it actually starts up the uh, real, uh, the actual standard Windows graphical mode. Okay, there we go. Now we're up into Windows XP 64-bit edition. So, let's see. Oh, hey look, our atomic clock widget actually synced up properly. That's nice. So, let's see. Have I done set HC on this yet? Does not appear that I have. Okay. So, XP 
Windows. Okay, let me see. Windows, System 32, DLL cache. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete everything out of here. You can... Actually, I'm not. You can safely empty the DLL cache folder if you want to. So, I'm just going to hit Control F. C. Alright, I'm finished searching here, so you can go away now. So, I'm just going to permanently delete those two files. Now I'm going to scroll down cmd.exe, copy that, and I'm going to paste it on the desktop, rename it to set8c.exe. Copy that yet again, and we're just going to paste that right over the existing Set8C. Now, now be warned that that may or may not trip Windows File Protection. So, let me see, DLL Cache. I don't want to look for a book. Go away. This search companion thing on Windows XP is so annoying compared to Windows 2000. Oh wow, it actually looks like it's uh, copied the replace set HC from the System32 folder, which is quite interesting. Anyways, once we have copied the command prompt over top of set HC and actually made sure that that change stuck by uh, overriding or deleting the setHC files out of the DLL cache folder. You, on Windows XP, you should be able to type Shift five times and get a system level command prompt. You can also do Alt Shift print screen and still get the same thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and start start up the Explorer shell, and it's clear that this is the oh. Uh, Beatnik Atomic Clock. I'd forgot about that. Sure, okay. So, let's see. Tie back out to that. Kill the log on, kill the log on UI. So, shove that down there. And let's see. If, if you log off the system user, if the system performs a standard non-ACPI shutdown. It does not look like that it is going to do that. We can still run things just like usual. Oh, there we go. Just took some spamming of the of the uh, key to get make it happen. Let's see, yeah, it looks like they fixed that in Windows XP. At least the uh, Windows XP Professional 64-bit version of the software. So let's see what happens if we log on as my user while still having a system-level shell up and running. Okay, and there's the uh, error message that I was talking about. Some instance of via VRAID is already running by another logon user. But it looks like it just simply replaced the shell. Okay, if we log off here. Looks like we've lost our Explorer shell. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so Windows XP is slightly hardened against this. I don't want to take a tour of Windows XP. I'm already very familiar with that operating system, but thank you. 
So let's see, if we take the shutdown option on Windows XP, what happens? Okay, it looks like we perform a standard ACPI shutdown. Okay, well that answers my questions. I'm boot this thing back up. And what I'm doing here is I've got the Athlon 64 system set up because I was anticipating just doing a salvage operation on Windows XP and Windows 2000. Because what happened is, back in early January, I took disk images of all the hard disks in the system, and all of the Windows bootloaders just died. Like, sometimes they couldn't even get this far. And, of course, XP, booting up Windows XP and Windows 2000 was an automatic and complete no-go. So... But, yeah, I mean... Of course, I dragged the system back out two months later, and now everything just suddenly boots, and I don't know why. <laughs> There's Windows 2000 booting up, just so you can tell I'm not lying about that. Yeah, it kind of freezes and yeah, it kind of freezes and hangs around while things are happening, but it does eventually make it into Windows 2000 make it into Windows 2000. See the progress bar just advanced. Yeah, now the reason why I would gain system level access on something like Windows 2000 or XP is that way I can do clever things like change the system and change the system theme or in this case change the background Here, one of my 73 gigabyte WD Velociraptor hard disks just grinding away in there. Uh, PCI Simple Communications Controller, that would be a modem. So, anyways, figured I'd just have, figured I'd just make that little tidbit here because I found that rather interesting and I also wanted to see if it would happen on Windows XP. Okay, I took the log off option. The system is hanging around because it likes to do this while Malwarebytes is initializing. Anyways, this is TCG Productions here. Peace out, guys. Peace out, and see you in the next one.